Hello. In this video, I'm going to summarise a short article by Donald Lazard, Raphael Lucia and Lewis Fives. It's called Building Your Company's Capabilities Through Global Expansion, and it appeared in the MIT Sloan Management Review in 2013. This article is useful as it links the concept of dynamic capabilities to international strategy. So linking to a broader set of work that sees international strategy as the transfer and combination of competencies, or if we should call them capabilities, and knowledge across borders. So see, for example, the work of Cogat and Zander. Now, given that for resources or competencies to provide competitive advantage, they have to show a degree of immobility. Often they're going to be embedded into the local context or show causal ambiguity. Hence, transferring such resources needs specific capabilities to be successful. It also needs a dynamic view. The fact that you can transplant them suggests they may not be as inimitable as you might like to think. There is also a link to be made here to Campbell, Gould and Alexander's concept of parenting advantage. Unless the parent can add value by the facilitation of resources across a multinational, ownership of overseas businesses needs to be questioned. Lazard, Lucia and Vibes start the article by suggesting that in an increasingly dynamic and complex competitive landscape, strategists need to go beyond traditional questions about which are the most attractive markets or the closest geographically or institutionally. They must focus on how to exploit, enhance and renew or even transcend their home-based sources of competitive advantage. This means asking two questions. Will your company's current capabilities provide competitive advantage in a target market? And will that new location give the company an opportunity to enhance its capabilities? And then building a platform to formally identify, transplant, upgrade and renew relevant capabilities. The authors point to the success of Apple, McDonald's and Ikea in taking home developed core capabilities and leveraging them across the globe. And also how Spanish telecoms company Telefonica and Cemex, the Mexican cement company, develop capabilities in new territories and bring them to bear in their home or other markets. The author's research suggests that global winners do this process systemically. Lazard and his fellow authors say that the simplest way a company can gain advantage in a foreign market is by exploiting competencies first arrived at home. However, not every transplant takes root. So managers need to identify which of the firm's capabilities will travel and where they can be best exploited. To do this, the Saad, Lucia and Vives introduce their simple RAT test, standing for relevant, appropriable and transferable. So which of the capabilities developed in the home market are relevant to customers in the target market? So do they create value for the customers there? Secondly, if deployed in a foreign market, would they be appropriable? That is, would the firm capture the value? So is there sufficient rareness and barriers to imitation to stop competitors matching the advantage or others in the distribution channel from capturing that value? And then thirdly, are the capabilities transferable? Can the firm deploy them effectively without sacrificing too much of the value creation by another firm 
or the customer. The test, they say, is just as important in ruling out expanding in an overseas territory. As in all theories of strategy, saying no and stopping things is just as important as choosing to do more of something or to do something new. The assessment of what passes the RAT test will vary by market targeted. Despite IKEA's success, Japanese customers do not value the self-assembly model. Walmart could not capture value in its initial move into Germany given the presence of discounters Lidl and Aldi. And Gamisa's manufacturing capability in wind turbines was not transferable to the USA due to a lack of a supplier base of small and medium sized specialists. While moving into China, local firms could imitate its designs quickly. The RAT test reminds us that transferring relevant capabilities and knowledge is rarely easy, given that they're often tightly integrated with the local context where they're developed. The authors then move on to look at the creation of new capabilities. Companies also expand overseas to gain access to assets or develop new capabilities. And so it is critical that strategists determine if new additions will result in an overall enhancement of the organization's capabilities and so its global competitiveness. Sometimes capabilities come from pre-existing knowledge in an overseas acquisition or joint venture. Other times, simply coping successfully with the challenges presented by another country's competitive and institutional environment. In either case, the key concern is do the new capabilities complement the company's existing set of capabilities? whether they will generate additional value and if it is possible to transfer them from the specific context in which they were developed. In order to evaluate this potential to enhance current sources of advantage, Lessard and his co-authors introduced the simple CAT test. So again, three questions. Firstly, are new assets and capabilities complementary to the existing capabilities that form the base of the company's competitive advantage? And then, as in the RAP test, are those new capabilities appropriable and are they transferable? Here again, the emphasis is both on what to seek to transplant and what not to. The authors give the example of Semex's acquisitions of the UK's RMC and Australia's Rinka in the 2000s. While in RMC, the post-merger integration mechanism successfully transplanted many new capabilities into Semex's resource base. But in Rinka, big structural and cultural gaps hindered the transfer of the very few, if any, new capabilities that Semex did not already possess. Having described their rat and cat tests, the authors move on to discuss how, taken together, these represent a virtuous circle of capability exploitation and enhancement. For most companies, it starts with exploring which of its capabilities have the potential to be relevant, appropriate and transferable in another market. As it starts to operate in a new foreign market, it typically finds that adaptation or the development of new capabilities is needed to progress. As corporate managers become aware of these new capabilities, they should consider what are complementary, appropriate and transferable additions to the capability base of the firm. 
So a continuous cycle of exploration, exploitation, adaption and enhancement. Nassad, Lucia and Vives give the example of Walmart and the capabilities in the small store concept it brought from Latin America. They also highlight this plays out in how Semex deliberately put in place highly formalised mechanisms, for example the PMI process, to identify new capabilities and exploit these throughout Semex and across the world. As the company goes through successive turns of the rat-cat cycle, it gains greater leverage from an increasingly rich and diverse capability set and so enhanced global competitive advantage. The authors finish by advising that firms at different stages will have different rat-cat emphases. In a rapidly evolving lead market, rat opportunities are likely to be the most relevant. While for companies in a multiplicity of markets or who are late entrants, the focus will be more on cat opportunities. However, put in place systemic mechanisms to assess and transfer suitable capabilities wherever they are found means that the firm becomes less dependent on the homegrown capabilities, becoming more of a truly integrated global network, to borrow Bartlett and Gauchel's term. So, a short article that does link internationalisation to RBV and dynamic capabilities, raising the need to think about the formal mechanisms you put in place to successfully enter overseas territories. While it does not provide depth in the nature and range of these mechanisms, it is a useful jumping off point to explore this area of strategy. Thank you for listening.